Hello everyone, I'm back again. In this video, I'm going to show you the cheapest and easiest way to buy a ball python, which really shouldn't be the way that you're going about buying a living animal. But if you want to start out cheap and easy, I mean, plus what I'm going to teach you in this video doesn't have to be cheap and easy. You can do exactly what I'm doing, but like buy more expensive products and it'll end up being the exact same. But I'm going to demonstrate in this the pretty much bottom line cheapest way you can get a ball python. Okay, so first before you even start looking at snakes but you know you're gonna get a snake, I say you should pick up your phone and hop onto Amazon. If you don't have an Amazon then you're gonna have to go to directly to all the stores where everything is going to be a little bit more expensive. So basically when you're gonna start you're gonna need just about six elements to set up the perfect ball python enclosure but to the bare minimum. So really you want to go above and beyond this but this is bare minimum but it can be done. I've already set up a list of items on my Amazon and the total has come up to $49.56 for everything that you need. So it's I'd say pretty affordable but I mean if you can't afford that then you probably can't afford a snake so you probably shouldn't be getting a snake. You know, if you can't afford a snake, don't get a snake. If you can't afford vet bills for a snake, don't get the snake. You know, like you have to have money set aside to care for food, vet bills, any sort of freak thing that might happen. Okay, if you can't do that, don't get the snake. If you can't afford a living creature, don't get the living creature. I'm going to order these items and then when they arrive, I will update you on everything. Basically on the cart are an under tank heater and a thermostat to regulate this under tank heater. Please, if you're gonna get an under tank heater or really any heater, you should get a thermostat. And I'm getting a digital hydrometer slash thermometer so I can read the levels within the enclosure, which are what you always need to be able to do, just so you always know where your levels are to make sure that everything is going. Right. And I also bought some hides and like little plants so that there's enrichment within the enclosure so that the snake doesn't feel like it's just in an empty box because that's not very nice. There you go. So today is Thursday, January 30th and it said that my stuff should arrive by Saturday, February 1st and I will see you again when they arrive. All right, so all of the stuff that I ordered from Amazon has arrived, and so I'll show you everything now. Ooh, look, an unboxing. Wow, so look at these. Packaging, plastic, because you know, who cares about the environment? As I talked about in the last clip, I bought an under tank heating mat. With a ball python, you need belly heat more than you need, what's it like, radiant heat? The heat that comes from like above. And that's because ball pythons need belly heat in order to digest the food that they're eating. You can still have the over tank heater, but 100% of the time you need to have an under tank heater. When you get an under tank heater, 100% of the time you have to get a thermostat because without the thermostat, the under tank heater will overheat. So you need a thermostat. For really any heating element, a thermostat would be good just so you can make sure that it's the correct temperature. Even for an over tank heater, you still probably need a thermostat. So, And of course, I've got foliage and enrichment. You always need enrichment for your snakes just so that it's not like they're living in like an empty space because that's not very nice. It's an electronic hydrometer and thermometer so all you have to do is pull this little plastic thing out and then the thing comes on and you can see what it says. So then basically these are also vital so that you are able to tell the temperature and humidity of your snake's enclosure so that you can make sure that the snake is living in the correct environment. So like ball pythons they need a humidity of 50 to 60 percent and a temperature on the hot side of about 90 degrees so with one of these you can make sure that you're keeping those parameters correct. Okay so the next most important step before even buying your snake is to set up its enclosure. So this is where controversies happen, but this is the part that can change the most from person to person. Yeah, you can buy literally what other, whatever kind of tank you need for your snake, just as long as it's size appropriate for the size of the snake that you're getting. So you can go out and buy like the full size tank. At this point in time, you can buy whatever you see fit to house your snake in. In my case, I bought a tub, a really big tub to keep my baby snake in. She's going to be a hatchling. This is a temporary just until, because this is quarantine, that's why we're in a different room. But it's still pretty big. I mean, she's a hatchling. She's three months old, so I think that that should be large enough for a hatchling. But that's how I'm doing it. Everyone can do something different. You can buy a tank, you could buy this, you could buy something bigger, you could buy something bigger. Don't buy anything smaller. But then now what you want to do is put everything that you just bought into the tank. 
or the tub that you just bought. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I even put anything in here is I'm going to sanitize it with this diluted F10 solution, which is a veterinary grade sterilizer. And you can buy that on Amazon and it tells you how to dilute it into water to make the perfect amount of it. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this in here and then I'm gonna put all the stuff in there. Okay, so right now there's still a little bit left in there and you want to let that evaporate before you put anything else in there. But now that that's done, let's move on to the next step. I'm going to show you how I put holes in the tub so that your animal can breathe and so the humidity is not too high. So basically, since it's a plastic tub, all I use is a hot glue gun and I make sure that it's set too high, which you can't see because it's covered in glue for some reason, but it's set to high. And then I let it heat up for a really long time and then I just use that little thing and I just like punch holes in the lid and in the walls of the tub. Okay, so basically now you just take your glue gun, which should be hot, and you just kind of like, I don't know if you can see, you just like stab it in. And if it's hot enough, it should make a hole through the plastic. And if it's not hot enough, then you just gotta wait, but it still takes a long time. Hello darkness, my old friend. So um, I switched to my phone because I'm filming at night and the lighting's not very good. But now that the tub has been uh, pulled, it has holes put in it and it's been sanitized. It's time to start with the uh, assembly of everything, like putting everything in the tank. Okay, so first I want to start with the heating pad. You flip it over, or basically you just put it on the bottom. So basically the back has this 3M sticky tape. All you have to do is like peel it off and stick it onto the bottom of your enclosure. Just to be safe, I also like to tape it on to make sure that it really stays. Okay, so that should be what it looks like when it's all done. Completely taped all the corners and it's smooth just so it doesn't stick up. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thermostat and open it. You can see the little probe. You want that to sit right on top of your heating pad so that it can sense the temperature. I like to put little tiny holes in my things. So basically the probe fits nicely right in one of those little tiny holes. And then you don't have to put it in through the lid. You can put it in through one of the, like the breathing holes and then tape it down onto the heating pad so then it's not in the way of the lid. You know, if that makes any sense. Okay, so basically it looks like that. Now you've got the probe tape directly on top of the heating pad so that it can read the temperature of the heating pad so you don't overheat your snake. Okay, so now is really the easy part. You put your substrate in your enclosure and right now, since it's a quarantine setup, I'm just going to use paper towels so I can monitor the poops. I will eventually switch it out to actual bedding. For right now, I'm just going to put down paper towels and then put the hides and the plants in and then it should be done. Okay, so basically here it is. It doesn't look too fantastic at the moment because this is just a temporary quarantine setup. I just wanted something simple so that she'd feel safe. We All that's left to do now is plug it in and hope that it all works. So now that all of that is out of the way and everything's set up and good and running and you know that it works, we can pick the snake. The website that I like to use is a website called Morph Market. All over the world, people are selling carpet pythons all the way down to crocodiles. So I mean you can really buy anything on this website. For us today we're going to be looking at ball pythons. First thing I like to do is I go to browse and if you know exactly which snake you want you can look through a specific trait or what I like to do is just go to browse latest and then the newest posted snake will be up on mine. So then these are the newest posted snakes. And if you want to change it you can switch to newest posted, least expensive, most expensive, least jeans, most jeans, oldest posted, newest posted, you know you've got a whole bunch of other stuff. First thing what I like to do is when I know what I'm going for, I'm looking for a female and say I just want it to be like under $300. Then it loads and then you still have the newest posted but they fit all of that criteria. So then here we go, we've got double head albino, lesser female, pies, super fire, pretty much whatever you want. You can look up here and someone's probably selling it. You can look up babies, adults, subadult, male, female, whatever you want. And then all you have to do basically is find the snake that you want. Once you find a snake that you like, you can learn a little bit about them, about their gender, trait, birth, weight, diet, 
they don't always say what they are but a lot of them do and you can also check on the person who's selling the reptile make sure that they're you know like legit you can check out their website if you want or what other snakes that they've sold and then if you like it you can hit thumbs up and add it to your wish list here you can see my wish list i have a whole bunch of snakes on there including the snakes that I've already bought, which I kept on here just cause. So like there's, you know, cinnamon yellow belly. This way, if you add a snake to your wish list, you can always come back and see it, but you gotta act quickly, otherwise the snakes will be sold. So that's my rule of thumb is to act relatively quickly before the snakes are sold. So let's say I want this jigsaw yellow belly. All you have to do is go onto their thing and inquire to buy. And that's pretty much it. You just tap inquire to buy. And then you write something saying like, I'm interested in this snake, and then you send it, and then that's it. And then after talking to the seller and you give them the money, so you have a whole back and forth and make sure everything's kosher and everything's good, then hopefully they send you the snake. So I ordered a snake already and she will arrive on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. They always arrive at 10 a.m. And so I will check in with you again when I'm going to pick her up. Okay, hello everyone. I'm in the car, obviously, but I just arrived at the FedEx hub. I think I'm a little early, but I'm gonna try to go in anyway to see if she's already arrived. Hey, okay, awkward. It's 8 o'clock and I got here and they don't even open till 8.30. Okay, I got her. Now we buckle up for safety because... I don't know. Just because... Okay, so terrible, terrible lighting, so that's why I'm using my phone again. The package said that it would arrive at 10.30, and so I arrived at 8, and at 8.30 it was ready for pickup, so basically that just shows that you always have to show up early to the FedEx hub so that the package isn't just sitting there. But anyway, it's, it's 9 o'clock, so it's still before the pickup time, and I've returned home with my package, so let's do this. Still warm, that's fantastic. And I'm snaky. Oh, me snaky. Hello, snaky. It's tight. The one thing I hate about these bags is I can never figure out how to open. Oh, this one's just tight. Never mind. Oh, actually, I spoke too soon. Oh, he's so small. He's so cute. Oh, hello, little baby. How do I always forget how small baby snakes are? You stinky. You smell like your poo-poo. But look, she's so small. <laughs> Okay, so also another important thing that you want to do is like hold them for a little while before you put them in their enclosure because your enclosure is heated and you just want to hold them and let them get to like your hand temperature before you put them in so that they don't go into shock by sudden temperature change, just FYI. Hello. Okay, now for the best part to put her into her new terrarium or whatever that you have that you just set up. It's a little wet because I just spilled the water bowl when I opened it, but I'll fix it. The number one rule is you do not want to touch them for the first week. They don't know where they are, they don't know their environment, they don't know anything about this new place, so you have to give them at least a week to settle in, and then you feed them, and then you give them another about four-ish days to settle after eating, and then you can handle them. It's like the most important thing, even though I know it's so hard. You want to handle your little baby, but you can't. 